Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, same thing. The vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me say, some of the remarks I'm going to make here are going to be controversial. I don't want you to view them as anything other than one man's opinion. Now it looks like, according to reports, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. has signed with Al Heyman. Right? Chavez Jr. is involved in litigation with Bob Arum and his group, Top Rank. Right? Now my point to you is simply this. There shouldn't be a problem. We're going to see Chavez Jr. in a blockbuster fight within the next few months. Understand Al Heyman is a manager. Understand Bob Arum is a promoter. Right? The two men could work together seamlessly. Right? A manager is like an agent in, let's say, pro baseball. Al Heyman is trying to get the best deal possible, the best purse possible, the best pay-per-view participation rate possible, right? You know, take of the profits, profit sharing, for Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. So, of course, Al Heyman would come to the table representing Chavez Jr.'s interests in negotiating with a promoter like Bob Arrow, right? Understand promoters are the event organizers, right? They're the ones who, like a producer in the movies, right? They secure the site for the fight. They make the deals with corporate sponsors to help defray the costs. They're the ones who set up the deals with pay-per-view operators or broadcast or cable stations, right, to televise the fight. They're the ones responsible for coordinating with the local commissions to make sure that the fight is properly licensed, right, to make sure that they have a qualified referee in the ring, right? They're the ones responsible for advertising the fight. Right? The online ads, the television ads, the print ads, the billboards. Now let me say that there are very few world-class dominant promoters in the business. Very few. Right? One of the giants in the industry is Bob Arum. I know the young guys, they hear about Bob Arum they hear about Golden Boy Promotions, right? There are other groups, right? Um, Kathy Duva's group, etc. But just to understand, Bob Arum used to be Oscar De La Hoya's promoter, right? If you go back in history, you're going to find out that Bob Arum has been promoting elite fights since at least the 1970s. Right? I believe Bob Arum's good friend, Jim Brown, yes, that Jim Brown, the Hall of Fame running back, arguably the best NFLer in history. I believe Jim Brown introduced Bob Arum to the sport of boxing, and Bob Arum took it from there. Right? Bob Arum might not have any peers when it comes to an ability to promote a big fight in a city like Las Vegas. Now understand one of the champion, Carl Frotch's dreams in life, we know this because he's told reporters, is to fight against a big name in Las Vegas. Right? He wants to go to Sin City. He wants to be on the billboards in a heavily promoted fight against a credible opponent. Now, of course, one of the biggest draws in boxing, just look at the pay-per-view numbers, 
right? This guy is very popular. Look at the numbers from his fight against Sergio Martinez. Look at how many people viewed his fights against Brian Vera. One of the biggest draws in boxing. He's certainly one of the most compelling people. Is Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right, Chavez Jr. is proven box office in Las Vegas. He's a big name. He's a credible opponent against Carl Froch. Understand, Chavez Jr. officially has only lost once, and that was to Sergio Martinez. Now, unofficially, I can tell you, in fact, I'll encourage you to Google and look at his fights against Carlos Molina. Yes, that Carlos Molina, the former champion at 154 pounds. Right, I would say it's debatable whether Chavez Jr. won those fights. What I would also encourage you to do is to look at the first Brian Vera fight, kill the volume, just look at that fight. I would argue there again that they raised the wrong man's hand at the end of the fight. But just understand, Junior did fight Vera again. Just understand, Junior is an explosive puncher. Junior can fight inside. There is a question on how Carl Froch would do against a front foot committed guy who can get inside and rake his body. Frotch versus Chavez Jr. is a blockbuster fight. Now I owe my subscribers this next paragraph. To the boxing hardcore, to those of you who want to know, okay, the fight's credible, but is this a fight between the two best at 168 pounds? I would have to say no. Right? Why? Because in my opinion, Carl Froch is not even the best guy promoted by Eddie Hearn in the weight class. I personally would take James DeGale. Right? A guy a lot of people don't know. I would take James DeGale over both of these guys. Right? Understand, Chavez Jr. would come inside on James DeGale. And then he'd find himself in the ring against the guy who's better on the inside than he is. Right? I, I personally don't believe James DeGale against Carl Froch is even competitive. Let me say this, though. I thought Lucien Butte would beat Carl Froch. Right? Carl Froch has exceeded my expectations. Just understand, though, I did take Froch against Jermaine Taylor years ago. I took Froch against Jean Pascal years ago. I believe those videos are still up here on YouTube. Right? I'm a fan of Froch's. I think Froch is very talented. I just feel he's not as talented as James DeGale. I believe also, and let's get real, I don't care how long this guy's been outside of the ring. Andre Ward has already beaten Carl Froch. Those talks are not theoretical. And I believe there again, if Chavez Jr. comes inside on Andre Ward, he'll find out that he's not as good on the inside as Andre Ward. And if he tries to stay outside on Andre Ward, as I like to say, Andre Ward is a chameleon. Ward, if he wants to, can work behind a jab and destroy you from the outside. So, while Froch versus Chavez Jr. is certainly a compelling fight, in my eyes it wouldn't decide who's the best at 168 pounds. Right? Let me just say this though. If you want a high profile, well promoted fight, right, that works seamlessly with the Las Vegas casinos and operators and bigwigs in a town that has bigwigs, right? Then you'd have a very hard time finding a better promoter than Bob Arum. 
In my opinion, this fight could work out seamlessly. Al Heyman could represent Chavez Jr. for a fight that would be against Carl Frotch in Las Vegas. Eddie Hearn, Carl Frotch's promoter, I believe sees the big picture. He knows he's a British promoter and that he might not have <coughs> the experience <coughs> in promoting fights in Las Vegas where his fighter wants to fight that Bob Arum has. Right? I think he also realizes too that if Carl Frotch were to beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. in Las Vegas, Carl Frotch would instantly become in the United States one of the biggest draws in boxing. Understand an argument can be made that he already is. Look at the television numbers, actual data from the United States for his fight in the UK, the rematch against George Groves. Right? So Eddie, Eddie Hearn might also realize too that James DeGale right now is a mandatory for one of Frotch's belts. Even if Chavez Jr. were to beat Carl Frotch, even if Frotch didn't have a rematch clause, Hearn might believe that his other fighter, James DeGale, could bring the title back to the United Kingdom by beating Chavez Jr. Let me point out though, and I don't say this lightly, I believe DeGale is going to have a harder time against Marco Antonio Parabell than he would have against either of these two guys. That's a real challenge the Gale faces in a few weeks. So you need to pay close attention to that fight. So the point I'm making is that Chavez Jr. is having a feud with Bob Arrow. But even the top rank people believe that they only have one more fight contractually with Chavez Jr. Right? One more fight. Right? Now, Al Heyman <clears throat> can represent Chavez Jr., get top dollar for him, maximum exposure for him, in a fight that could be promoted by Bob Arum, giving the top rank people the one fight they want. Right? Understand... Top rank is not just a litigant against Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. They're also a great promotional outfit. Right? They're bringing value to the table. There is a clear opportunity here for a win-win for everyone involved. So as you read these articles about, you know, Chavez Jr. signing with Al Heyman, Right, And as you think to yourself, oh man, is Chavez Jr. ever going to get back in the ring? Because isn't he in litigation with his promoter, Top Rank? Just understand that there's a way to put a bow on the package here. That would have Chavez Jr. fighting Carl Frotch in a huge fight in Las Vegas that's fully promoted, aggressively promoted, by top rank, right? Al Heyman is a manager. Bob Arum is a promoter. They don't have to step on each other's toes. Also, I understand that Al Heyman has worked with Golden Boy in the past, right? But I think everyone involved is an adult and understands that there are legal claims being made right now by top rank that need to be addressed. Right? If I were the fighter, I would try to figure out a way to be in a blockbuster fight against a reigning champion while the mood for the fight, the public mood, is hot. There's a way to do it here that could have Chavez Jr. in the ring against Carl Frotch in Las Vegas while he's managed by Al Heyman with the fight promoted
by top rank. I hope everyone gives that a very hard look. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.